Hello and welcome everyone, Lionheart here and today I am reviewing the Hopog PVR Rocket which is a game recorder similar to the Ava Media Live Game and Portable that I reviewed a while back and I'll be drawing some comparisons to that device later on in this review but um, yeah this is Hopog's uh, offering of a portable recording device normally they have that kind of the bigger boxes to record which to be honest aren't that big and you probably could manage um, using them as a portable solution as well but this really does offer the maximum portable solution from them and uh, I'm going to be having a look at it I'll be showing you some test gameplay footage um, of Battlefield 4 um, bear in mind that that will be obviously re-rendered so the quality may look slightly worse uh, than you should expect it because I'm editing it into this review video whereas normally you can if you want to use the built-in encoder in the device so that it will record and encode at the same time and upload straight to YouTube when you're done but obviously if you want to um, edit and add a few other things in there are parts of the software which allow you to do some basic editing which I'll go through later on as well but uh, if you want to put it into Sony Vegas or something like that then obviously you will be re-rendering and I'll talk about the pros and cons of this particular device and that sort of thing later on but what does it work with? It works with um, PlayStation and Xbox. Um, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One are now, I'm a PC gamer and that's what I'll be showing the setup for this review. But um, it does have a note on the box saying that, <laughs> uh, excuse me, it will not work uh, or record video from any HDMI source that has the HDCP copy protection on it. So I don't know if that's been fixed on PlayStation 4 and Xbox One right now. Uh, obviously, console dudes and dudettes, um, you will know your stuff more than me, but I'm looking at it from a PC recording standpoint, as I am a PC gamer. Well, actually, I have the PVR Rocket already out, so I'll quickly show you what the device looks like. So it's pretty darn small, and um, it can actually fit in your pocket if you want it to. There you go. So it is, it is portable, it's good, it does the pocket test, which is good. Um, as you can see, I'll talk about some of the features actually that are on the top of it as well and show you all the various buttons. But first of all, I will note that I will be mentioning and comparing it to this quite a lot in this review. Now, this is the Ava Media Live Game Portable. There is a link in the description to my review of the Live Game Portable from Ava Media. And these two are basically some of the prime contenders going at each other to see who is going to claim the Portable King Recorder title as such. Don't use that title. Um, but yes, I'll be comparing it to this quite a bit in the review. Um, notably it's software and obviously it's recording ability and you can check out the review of the live game and portable um, in the description as I said to see what the video recording quality of that is like as well but we're here today to look at the rocket I like the name it's cool um, so what does the rocket um, tote that say the AV Media doesn't well both of them offer two ways of recording essentially you can record to your PC uh, and use obviously your PC's hard drive or you can use expandable storage. Now, the Ava Media Live Game Portable did that through SD cards, which obviously they're small, they're portable, and uh, they can hold nowadays a reasonable amount of space. I think you can get them up to 128 gig, so that's pretty decent. That should cover you for you know several game hours, considering that both devices encode the videos down to smaller file sizes. However, the thing I really like about the Rocket is that it has a USB out and it doesn't support SD cards but it supports obviously um, USB sticks but notably and I have seen this working on other people's reviews um, but I don't have one to test it myself but it does work from what I've seen is that you can you plug it up to a portable USB hard drive now for me that is an insta win over the live game portable because portable hard drives are well and for what the size you get actually cheaper than some of the high speed um, SD cards you get because obviously for the SD cards that you want for the live game of portable you want a class 10 and they start costing a fair bit of money especially in larger file sizes whereas a reasonable 500 gig portable hard drive I mean you can get it for about 40, 50, 60 pounds tops um, depending on where you shop around and I think that is a really good idea and I think that the USB out there um, makes it a lot more uh, the, the kind of the, the PC free mode I think is a lot better on this than the live game portable. Let's have a look at the obviously the inputs and stuff. So obviously on this side you have the uh, the power coming in from a USB cable. You have AV in if you want to use component um, cables and what have you. And you can also deliver uh, auxiliary audio in through that. And I'll actually tell you about that because that is important for um, recording audio with PC or rather listening to the audio while you record it. I'm sorry I've got some sun coming in today so my face is going to be lit up. You then have the HDMI out and in. Um, obviously this works as a pass through through to your PC so you can see what you're recording uh, while you're doing it. And then on the other side obviously you have that USB plug in there and then you have a microphone in. Now 
this is something I will talk about a little bit later when we get to the software, but um, the Live Gamer Portable <laughs> doesn't actually have an audio, um, like a microphone in. It has an audio in, so you can feed the audio directly into the device and then pass it back out to your speakers or something like that, or your headset. But um, in the software, it allows you to choose any microphone, even a USB one, that's plugged into your um, PC. Obviously, USB headsets um, are, don't yet work completely with the Live Gamer Portable. There's a workaround, though, to do that. But that allows you to use any microphone that's plugged into your PC. The downside of the uh, of the rocket here is that it only will um, accept a microphone that's plugged into the box to do a live commentary. Obviously, you can add commentary afterwards, but I'm a big fan of doing live commentaries because if you do a commentary afterwards, you know you're doubling your recording time and things like that. But also, I enjoy doing commentaries live and reacting live because often when I come back to do another commentary, I kind of forget what I'm saying and then I'm kind of catching up with what I'm trying to commentate in the actual video. So. Um, you can obviously plug a microphone in there, but it has to be a 3.5 mic input jack. It cannot be a USB one. Um, the software does not support any other mic input bar the one that's plugged in here. However, because of that feature, on the front, Hopog have included all of these controls, which is touch um, control. It's not a touch screen, but it, they're all touch controls as such for uh, boosting the mic volume, the gain, uh, muting the microphone out of the touch, uh, and um, then you can like lock the settings down so you don't accidentally press another setting um, on the box. And then obviously the big red button is your record button. So it's all very accessible. There's obviously a grill underneath for ventilation, I assume. Um, it is a nice box, and actually the light strip around here will turn different colours depending on what you're doing, whether you're recording or whether you know you're loading up the software and things like that. So that's nice. But um, while I do appreciate the mic controls here, I do think that it would be a lot better if you could input any microphone source into your PC. But again, this isn't just for PC recording, this is for console recording as well, so perhaps that helps out there. Anyway, let's have a look at this thing set up, um, how it all plugs in for a PC setup at least, and how I currently have it set up for recordings. Then we'll have a look at some Battlefield 4 gameplay, and then I'm going to wrap up and do a kind of side-by-side uh, -side comparison versus the Live Game Portable, which one should you get? So, let's have a look at the setup. So here we're going to have a look at the actual setup of the Hopog Rocket. I've got it all plugged into my PC, so we'll just go through the various bits that I've got. I've got obviously uh, my microphone plugged in. I'm not using my Corsair Vengeance headset, I'm actually using a Q-Pad um, uh, Q90, I believe, or QH90, um, because that doesn't run off USB, it runs off good old... 3.5 millimeter jacks. So plugging that in the front so then I can then control everything through the touch sensitive um, controls at the front. I can mute it, enable it, and you lock down the controls. You can give an instant boost by uh, 20 decibels as well if you want to as well for instant mic boost but you can control the volume all through here. Touch of a button um, generally, I probably, I mean, it's, it's a nice feature to have, but I probably wouldn't use that so much bar the mute button and um, to quickly mute my microphone. Um, just because generally I have my microphone, like, sort it out at a set level and then go from there, sort of thing. But it is nice that that is all included. Obviously, you have that big red button, which I'll quickly show you now. Um, it's green at the moment, which means it's ready to go. Press the red button, it goes red when it's recording. When you're done and you're finished recording, you just press the red button again and you are done. It goes back to green and it will flash when you first uh, plug it in and what have you and there's other uh, light modes all uh, described in the little manual that comes with it I should actually say the other cables that come with the um, with the rocket so you get a um, a power uh, a USB cable that goes in to power the Hopo rocket you get a component cable if you want as well and uh, down in the box as well which I won't show you but I've got a uh, PlayStation 3 component cable as well. You then also, they give you a rather generous length of HDMI in cable uh, and then you obviously have to supply your own HDMI out to your monitor but you should have one of those for your monitor or a TV or whatever you're plugging it up to. Um, but this HDMI cable is a lot longer than the one that came with the Ava Media Live Gamer Portable so I am a lot happier with the length of it. They definitely were far more generous with the length of cable. If you can hear a plane in the background, uh, just ignore that. <laughs> I've got my windows open. But um, yes, yeah, so everything's plugged in. That's all you need to start recording. Now, I will say though, with PC, 
you won't actually be able to hear the audio while you record unless you um, add some extra cables in, which I'll talk about in a moment. But the reason why this is is because the audio comes in via HDMI and then goes out to your monitor. Now, I don't know about you guys, but most monitors that I know of don't have an audio out. This is why I personally feel this um, this device is kind of a little bit more angled at console recording because obviously with a console your your monitor is a TV most likely and your TV will have built in speakers so you'll be able to hear everything that's going on or if not most TVs have a an audio out jack for say like plugging in a headset or headphones and so you can do it that way if you're plugging in your headset or something like that but obviously for PC our monitors generally don't have audio outs there are some I have come across and um, that would be quite a useful thing to be honest but this does not whereas the Ava Media Live Gamer Portable which I have here as you can see it has an audio in and audio out so if you want to you don't need to put the audio in because the audio will be fed through the HDMI from the back of your PC but you can plug your headphones directly into the audio out to hear the sound while you record at the same time and that's all part of the device it comes with it the rocket though in order to do this you need some extra cables However, I will just say a huge thumbs up to the Hopog Twitter because I actually, on the day they sent me this to review, um, well, to obviously start getting ready to review it, um, I noticed this issue and I said, how, how can I possibly hear my the in-game sound while recording at the same time? Because at the moment, if I um, set the HDMI of the Rocket as the default audio device, um, the audio will get recorded, but I won't be able to hear it because there's no way of plugging my speakers directly into the device. So they quickly linked me up to some extra cables I'd need in order to do this. Now, the first thing you'll need actually comes with the uh, rocket, which is the component cables, which plugs into the back of the rocket like so. And then you'll be plugging into uh, these two plugs, the red and the white bottomed, for your uh, audio left and right. But the things that you're going to need to buy yourself in order to make this w to, to work so you can hear and record at the same time is first of all you're going to need a 3.5 um, audio male splitter out to two females and then you're going to need to buy um, a left and right um, RAC I believe it is the cable um, so this one you plug into one of the splitters you can obviously use this for like headphone splitters. You might even have most of these cables lying around the house, to be honest. Um, I nearly did, but I went and bought some separate cables anyway to have some spares. So obviously, this end goes into the back of your PC, into your into your speaker out, your green jack. And then if you want to listen to the game that you're recording at the same time, you plug your speakers into this end. But then you need this RAC um, red and white cable, which you plug into the other available splitter, headphone splitter jack. And then you have these two component... Um, left and right audio cables which we then come back to those cables I showed you earlier from the component that comes with the rocket and you plug obviously the red into the red the white into the right and then you've got right and left channel um, sound and then you plug the end of it into the rocket and then in the software that comes with it which I'll show you uh, very shortly before we have a little um, video quality test with some Battlefield 4 footage you then select the right and left channel audio um, for the audio input and then the device hears what's going on in the game and you hear what's going on in the game so um, while it is uh, kind of a bit of a negative for the device that it doesn't have a kind of a native audio out support that the live game portable does have um, full credit to Hopog uh, and their support for getting back to me so fast and and showing me the cables I need to buy. And if you're wondering, how, you're thinking, well, you've already spent you know over a hundred pounds on this device. How much more are you going to spend on some cables? These cables came to about five pounds for me. You can get them even cheaper. The ones um, the Hopog team actually linked me to would have come to about three pounds. But I actually went down to my local supermarket and bought these from their tech section because I wanted to get recording that day. Um, I will just say I am currently having an issue with my current cables that I've bought um, and that I get a high uh, high pitch sign of static noise when I have these plugged in so at the moment the video test will actually be um, I won't be listening to what I'm recording 
Uh, that won't make any difference for you guys, you'll be able to hear it all fine together. But I think I may need to buy some different cables or see what Hopok have to say because I'm getting this kind of whine sound. I may need to ground my audio out units or something like that. But um, that's no fault of the device, that's my cables because I have tested it. Um, and obviously it works fine when the cables aren't in there, so it's obviously the cables going into it um, or something to do with the component going in. Uh, but I'll see what I can do, sort that out, and if I have an update for you guys, I will let you know. But, again, that's kind of why I feel this is geared a little bit toward, more favourably towards consoles, because obviously you don't need any of this extra stuff, because your speakers on your TV that you're plugging into via HDMI will already support audio out. Um, so for PC, there is a little bit of extra fiddling um, to do to get it to work as intended, but uh, overall, not an issue, and can easily be solved by some extra cables. So now let's have a look at the software very briefly before we have a quick um, video quality test on Battlefield 4 and uh, then I will wrap up the review. So now we're having a look at the Hopog uh, Capture software that you need to run basically in order to use the Rocket and their other uh, PVR recorders. It's a pretty simple design, it's definitely not as um, as beautiful or as nice looking as the Ava Media Rec Central, but it does the job. Um, I would like, to be honest, a few more kind of more detailed settings like the Rec Central software in its advanced section. These are all kind of pretty pretty basic, and um, you know I don't feel that it's kind of the best layout. But anyway, I, I'm being picky about the software. So how does the software work? You've got the video input, which obviously I'm doing it through HDMI for my PC which is now going to flicker a black screen and then come back on because that's what it does when you change some of the settings um, audio input HDMI but obviously uh, as I mentioned in the video you want to use line in a left and right using that um, RAC um, cable uh, into the component cables and again changing that will affect it all so that's how you listen to it um, both the in-game sound and record it but uh, for the video test, as I said at the moment, I'm hearing kind of a bit of a high pitched staticky whine when I have that enabled. I think it's my cables or something to do with the grounding of my audio, so we'll, I'll have to sort that out another time. But through HDMI, it works fine. Obviously, I just don't hear what's going on at the same time. So you can control the uh, in game audio level and your microphone, get them balanced right. You can control the. Oh, and again, the settings are going to change. This is. I don't know why it does this, why it flickers so much um, when you change all these settings and then it comes up saying cable n not connected I don't know if it's still recording or what you're, you guys are seeing, I'll see this in the edit there we go, DVI input because I'm actually using an adapter okay I won't bother changing that video quality slider because it will probably change it again I mean it's not, it's not a nuisance really because it's just obviously configuring the settings and just kind of refreshing um, but obviously just trying to record and show you guys, a bit annoying I've got it set at a constant um, video quality rate and I'd normally have it at its maximum which is 18 now that compared to the LGP of Ava Media, the Live Game Portable, the Live Game Portable can go up to 60 which means that you'll get really raw um, uncompressed footage obviously having it at 18 um, megabits per second does mean it is compressing it um, we can have a look at the actually the footage that I've uh, previously recorded for Battlefield 4 which I'm going to show you in a moment to the .ts format is uh, 509 megabytes uh, for 3 minutes and 39 seconds of gameplay you can export that over to MP4 the file size will pretty much stay the same but um, that's at uh, 18 megabits uh, per second so at maximum recording quality the file sizes are going to be reasonable I mean you're looking at what way you can look at 6 minutes will be a gig um, 2 gig for just over 12 minutes, um, 3 gig for, you know, an 18 minute video. So, you know, for people that make, uh, you know, um, let's plays and stuff that are going to be 20 to 30 minutes long, you're going to be looking at 5 to 6 gigs. So, you may want to lower that quality down to around about um, 12 to 14, probably a bit more, uh, slightly better file size for you guys to upload straight to YouTube. Or obviously you can, if you want, try and re-encode it or re-render it in something like Sony Vegas, render it down a bit, but you will risk um, affecting the quality there a little bit. But the export to MP4 is incredibly quick, I'll show you now. And just um, export it, I'll put um, just, uh, oh that's the, enter, enter the target file name. Okay, well, we're just going to change it here because it's where it's saving to. So I'm just going to put um, test2. 
and hit OK. And so that's exporting that over to MP4. And that's that's pretty darn fast to do that kind of a okay, that's five hundred um megabytes, so you know, it's not gonna take you less than a minute really for most files I'd have thought. So that's pretty darn good. That instantly um converts it over there and we're gonna mute it here, but we can see a little preview of the footage I'm about to show you in a moment in Battlefield four. You guys get to see this in a bit, but you can see the preview and obviously you can access it all here, you can edit it. Um, you can cut it and, and things like that and split it and, and all sorts and you can add in um, other media sources I think and so you can add that in. So it's quite a powerful bit of um, of software. Basic but um, pretty uh, reasonable and when you're ready and you want to upload to YouTube you just come to this little unmarked button here next to settings and hit upload to YouTube. Got some settings where you can change the directory and everything like that and use hardware acceleration full video frame and everything like that, other settings. So it's a pretty, um, I wouldn't say as, as uh, detailed as Ava Media's Rec Central software, but it does the job and it does everything you need it to. Um, but yeah, so now let's have a look at the video quality test with Battlefield 4, and uh, then I'll be wrapping up the review, final thoughts in comparison to the Ava Media Live Game of Portable. Hello and welcome everyone to the video uh, quality test of this review. I'm playing some Battlefield 4 on uh, on maximum settings or, or near max. In fact I'll show you the settings that I've got got this on. So I've got it on ultra and just two times anti-aliasing there. And I've got an FPS counter in the top left so you can see what my FPS is. While recording this, recording this at the highest quality settings that the rocket can do which is 18 megabits per second and obviously that is capped at 30 FPS um, and there's really no need to be able to record it any higher because YouTube restricts or would re-encode your video down to 30 FPS anyway and it only, only shows 30 FPS on its videos at this current moment in time so obviously I won't be doing very well <laughs> in this, um, the aim isn't to show you uh, that I'm a, a skilled Battlefield 4 player, which I am not, but it's just show you the quality. Um, some quick moving around, let's get some gunshots firing in there so you can hear what it sounds like. Oh, and I've alerted someone to my presence and I'm now dead. That must look really odd from their, from their angle, their view. Me just running around, shooting around into the air. Thank you, you've just featured in a Lionheart review. But yeah, I'm really impressed with the quality that comes out of the device. And, uh, it is obviously quite easy to set up. Let's kill this guy here. Kill, 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 kill. I'm spraying. I'm not looking where I'm going. I'm doing this properly. Someone was behind me. I think. Nope. Okay. Hello, dudes. Hey, friends. Uh, as far as I can tell, there is no FPS drop when using this device. Um, it flickers like the odd one FPS difference when I first start recording, but there, there is no real difference. This is me running Battlefield at the best that my PC can run it. Um, at the moment. Yeah, my PC specs are on my channel page on the About tab if you're interested in them. Let's uh, grab us one of these. Oh, 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 please don't kill me. Just got this cool gun. Which is like a grenade launcher? No idea. Well, I, don't, I don't even care. As long as it looks cool and it does some damage. And I'm probably going to die and lose it any moment now. Die, everyone die. There we go, I killed someone. Revive! Oh, and I've lost my gun. No, okay. Ooh, someone, someone's around here. Oh, would you die? Thank you. Pray and spray. Works every time. This guy around the other side of this building. And there. Ah, oh, crap, didn't even look. But yep, yeah, anyway, that's why I'm going to wrap up the quality test. As you've seen, pretty darn good quality. Just bear in mind that obviously it will be re-rendered slightly, so the quality you're seeing on YouTube, it, uh, it would actually be slightly higher because I've uh, brought this video in as part of my review video and edited it again in Sony Vegas, so that will have decreased the quality a little bit by re-rendering it. So it will look, if anything, even better uh, if you upload direct from the uh, Hopog uh, recording center software. Anyway... 
yep, let's have a wrap up and final kind of pros and cons throwdown and comparison to the LGP. What I like, what I don't like, and we'll give it a score and wrap up. So we've looked at the video quality, we've looked at the software that supports the Hopog Rocket, and we've had a look at all its features and how to set it up on PC. So now I'm going to give it a score and a kind of final wrap up of uh, what I think about it. I should say one feature I have missed out and probably some of you have been commenting about, does this live stream? No it doesn't. Unfortunately at the moment on their website it says that this does not support live streaming. Um, I don't know if that means that they're going to add live streaming support in for this at some point. I don't know if the device is just perhaps maybe not capable in terms of hardware of doing live streaming. So this is um, purely for localized portable recording. You can't live stream with that. So that does give a bit of an edge to the live game of portable from Ava Media, which can live stream and do localized recording. But let's have a, a, a look at the, the pros and cons for this, what I like about it. I like that it has the mic input, I like that it has USB because obviously you can plug portable hard drives in. I think that portable hard drives and things like that are far better storage devices than say SD cards because you've got to have a class 10 SD card for the Ava Media Live Gear Portable to really get HD quality video. Um, it's a simple box, you know, you just got the HDMI out and in and the AV in and obviously the USB power to power the device. Um, speaking of that, the actual cable that powers the um, the rocket, I will just show you, it has two plugs on it, a red one and a black one. The black one is the one you plug in if you want to record and save the recording to your PC. The red one is if you want to use it just in standalone. This just gives power to the device because if you're doing it in standalone, you're going to be plugging in something via USB into here to actually store it. I like that it's got a nice big red button, I like the mic controls, they're useful. Um, I didn't use them too much personally because I just have my microphone setting to one setting and that's it. But actually the mic mute button was very useful. I had a couple of people coming in while I was trying to record stuff. And uh, just pressing that mute button was really useful. Um, it's a nice box as I said, it fits quite comfortably in your pocket. I like that it has a light round it, show you green obviously it's ready to go, red when it's recording. That's pretty darn good. What don't I like about it? I don't like that it, unlike the Ava Media Live Game Portable, it doesn't have an audio out. Uh, which is one of these here. Um, I would love to see that because then I wouldn't need to faff around with AV um, in cables um, to obviously show that workaround to get the audio uh, coming through to my headset or speakers and to the actual device so it can hear it and record at the same time. The reason why I didn't use that in the recording was because at the moment those cables are giving me a lot of static when I plug it into the box. I don't know whether that's the cable's fault uh, or the device. I have a feeling it's the cables probably, um, but there's no real way of me finding out about that. But um, because of that, I kind of feel like it is geared a little bit towards um, console gamers, Xbox and PC, uh, uh, PlayStation rather, not PC, because obviously when you plug that into your TV, your TV has speakers or an audio out for your headphones. So I feel it does kind of lean a little bit towards the, the console gamers out there. Obviously it does support PC, but I do kind of feel that um, it's not as supportive as the live gamer portable. Um, while this does encode um, video really well, um, it is limited to 18 megabits. Now if I wanted to record more of that, because obviously I don't have to record it to um, portable storage, I can record it straight onto my PC, and as a PC gamer, I'm sometimes interested in recording like the highest quality raw footage and then editing it in something like Sony Vegas. Um, it's, the Live Game Portable offers that option to have up to 60 megabit recording, although I will say that when this was first released, the Live Game Portable only um, supported up to 20. Up to 60 is something that um, Ava Media added in, so perhaps um, Hopog will add that support in as well to record at higher quality levels as well, but again it depends whether the actual hardware can support that. Um, but right now um, the Logo Portable does have the edge because I can record in uh, you know raw quality and then use my own um, record it at my own rendering software, Sony Vegas, to edit it down and render it down. But obviously this is a, this is a lot quicker because it has its own encoder like the live game portable if you set it down to uh, lower um, bit rates. Overall, it's a great product. If you are a fan of the Hopog products and the Hopog brand, then and you're not interested in live streaming, then this is a solid product to go for. Uh, and you're interested in just encoding on the go, no need to re-render it or anything like that. The editing is actually pretty good that comes in the center software. Can't really fault that. I'm going to give it a 9 out of 10 for a portable PVR. So, and also, I should say, a massive thing that this has over whatever media supplies 
is the length of its HDMI cable. This is a 2 meter HDMI cable that comes with the rocket. Ava Media supplied about that long a cable for HDMI. That's not even really enough to plug it in into the back of my PC. When I had it plugged into the back of my PC, this was tilted up on the back because it was resting, because that's as far as I could pull it up, um, because the length of cable was terrible. So full credit to um, Hophog for including a decent length cable, because um, the one that came with the LGP for Ava Media was terrible. So sure, um, not really, you know, just usable. So uh, well done, Hopog there. This gets a nine out of ten. Those of you that have been waiting to find out what I'm actually going to give this, because when I first reviewed the Live Game Portable, I hadn't seen any other PVRs before. I honestly didn't know what I could compare this to uh, in terms of quality and things like that. Um, but now, uh, thanks to Hopog, they've sent me this. I can actually give uh, you know this guy a score. So I've given this a nine out of ten. I'm going to give this a ten out of ten. It has the live streaming capability. You can record in higher bit rates. So you know, while this is portable, you can use it as your standalone PVR recorder. Um, you know, plugged into your PC, and you know you can record up to those raw, high quality 60 um, megabits per second uh, bit rate, and um, you know then render it down in your own time, sort of thing. And I do like the extra uh, options that the Rec Central software offers. I like the layout a little bit more. Um, so out of the two, I'd probably choose the Ava Media Live Game Portable, just for me as a PC gamer. Um, with those audio out options, it works a bit better, I don't have to buy extra cables. But still, the Hopper Rocket is a brilliant um, solution to portable recording on the go, um, especially if you're a console uh, gamer. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed this review. Thanks to Hopog for sending me this to review, and I will see you all again soon. Ciao for now.